Hey, how's it going? And today we are doing an intermediate level tutorial on how to trigger a level blueprint events from the sequencer. And this is actually based on this Unreal Engine authorized instructions. <laughs> and I literally follow this step by step and it's kind of messed up. There's a couple areas where this is messed up. We're going to do this. This is what I'm following. So you can go online and try to follow it and see see where you get but basically what we're doing is we've got a level sequence here and we're going to we're going to call our level blueprint so usually this calls the the director blueprint this it calls that it doesn't usually call the level blueprint so that's supposed to be there's a blueprint interface that we're supposed to be able to use to connect so i did get it working but it's not following the instructions exactly so we'll just make our way through it and see how it goes. So if I hit what we've done right here, let me hit stop and I'll show you that what I've got is basically I've just triggered a particle effect to go for 10 seconds. And this is in the level blueprint, right? And it's being called from the level sequence at this trigger event. So if I hit play, you'll see the particle event starts. It should go for about 10 seconds because it's on that delay and then it shuts off after see it stops after 10 seconds and that's that's it that's all there is to it so i'll be back in just a minute and this doesn't take too long but it might be 10 minutes but it might be worth your while at least it'll show you how potentially this could work so anyway i'll be back in just a minute all right i'm back and uh, we're gonna get started i'm in unreal engine 5.3 and i'm having an issue with the content drawer again where you dock it in layout and this window pops up. And so just to remedy that, we're just gonna go to Windows and we'll just do the default editor. It has to reset. I don't know, that was an old bug and it's back. So it's weird, sometimes a Unreal Engine will have a bug and they'll get rid of it. And then in the next version, the next version comes out and it's gone and then the next version is back. So I have no idea what's going on with that. So anyway, I'm actually just following that tutorial that I showed you. Earlier, we're just following it step by step until we get into the messed up part. So to get started with this, we're gonna create a blueprint interface. I'm gonna right click, blueprint interface right there. And we're supposed to call it something that we'll recognize. So I'm just gonna call it my blueprint interface. So I know I did that. And then all we have to do is double click into this I'm just going to dock this up here and we want to name this function here. So we just select it and you can hit F2 and we're just call this my, my blueprint function. So it's easy to get confused between the interface and the, it's the function inside of it. So we'll compile and save that. And that's all we have to do for that. So that's done. And then on to the next step is we are going to go into our level blueprint here and we are going to implement that interface so we simply go to class settings and over here it says add and it should be in here I could just scroll down it should be my blueprint interface right there and then you'll see it comes in over there and we'll compile and save and that's fantastic. And this is basically going to be a, an event, like an event call. So what we do is you don't click and drag on it. You double click it and it creates this event. Fantastic. We're actually following the tutorial perfectly right now. So here we need to create a particle effect. So that's why you need to have starter content in here. So you have something to trigger. So I'm just going to double click in here and we'll just get the tried and true fire and it comes in already activated so we need to unactivate it so where it says auto activate just turn it off because we're going to turn it on that's going to be our whole thing that we're going to do so with that selected we're going to go back into the level blueprint here and if we right click we should grab a reference to it and then once we grab a reference to it we're going to drag off of here and go activate activate it 
and pop it in here. And just to know that we're actually the ones activating it, we can just throw a delay in here. Just so that we know we're the ones actually doing it. So we can make it again a 10 second delay. So we'll go 10 seconds. And now just like we activated it, we're going to deactivate it. So we'll just pull off of here and search for deactivate. And it's right there. Click and just pop that over there. So all this is just to create a an effect to show that this is actually working. That's all this is. It's going to be any, you could have it print a string, I suppose. You know, you don't have to do this. You could do whatever you wanted it to do. So it's just some function you're wanting to call to the level blueprint. Okay, and now we're done with that. Now we're just going to set up our event track. So we'll go to the content folder level, and there's our blueprint interface right there. Right click, go to cinematics, level sequence. We'll just leave it called new level sequence. We'll click into it. And this is real straightforward. We're just going to go get an event track and a trigger. And we're just going to add a keyframe right there. So we're going to have this start right away. It doesn't matter how long this goes for because all this is going to do is basically just calling that other blueprint to start the particle effect. So it doesn't really matter how long this plays for because it's just this one keyframe event. Once we've got that keyframe, if we double click, see when we get that icon right there, if we double click it, it pulls us into its the director blueprint and you see where it says new level sequence director blueprint sequence or events and this is how we normally trigger this is normally how the sequencer trigger things so the difference is this is just the director blueprint and we're trying to trigger something from the level blueprint so that's all this is about it's just an experiment now we're supposed to according to the instructions we're supposed to go to class settings and let, let me show you. Let me show you what I think is the error here on the instructions. So it says implement interface like you did in the level blueprint, enable class settings in the director blueprint. And in the details, add drop down menu for inherited interfaces. Well, it's not, there is no inherited interfaces. If you look here, there's inherited interfaces. It looks like the button is here, but Really, if you look at the here, it says implement interface. You see that? So we're not calling the inherited interfaces. We're really doing the implemented Im interface. You see that? Implement? <laughs> I think that's a typo. I don't think it's supposed to say inherited interfaces there. But what do I know? I'm just a peon in this big world. See over here? Inherited. There's no drop-down menu there. But here there is, right? And of course, if we search, we'll come to my, it's here somewhere, my blueprint interface, and we'll compile and save it, and it's over here, right? Now here's where the big, the big mess up comes, because if we go back to this tutorial, we've done that, it has this whole section here, it says now we're going to create the logic, right? And it says, it even gives us a warning here. It says, make sure you are using the blueprint interface function that targets the sequence blueprint. Other function targets will not work. Well, what I found is this isn't, this isn't available. We don't have access to this. Don't ask me why. We only have access to this. But it still works with this. So, because there's this little trick they show here. And so once we target it, it makes it still work. So we're going to disregard this whole section. This whole section seems messed up to me. So, and I'll show you right now, because we're going to do just what they said to do. We're going to right click and we're going to search for my blueprint function right here. And look, we don't have, there is no call function here. Searched a million ways. I've done all different kinds of things. It doesn't, it's not available. Don't ask me why. So we're just going to take this one here, right? My blueprint function, even though it says the other ones won't work. We're going to drag this in. And the little trick is, because it says the target is the self. And you'd think like, well, the self is this blueprint itself. So don't ask me why. It, you know. But anyway, we're going to just drag this over here. 
And then this makes sense that this is, we're retargeting it to here. It accepts the target. So anyway, we're going to compile and save. Now we're back to the tutorial. We go here, third person map. And what it says to do is click on here, right click on here and go to properties. Well, we're tied to the, the sequencer event. And then there's this past found object to target, right? And it sets target and <laughs> it crashed. It crashed on me. So let's go ahead and uh, how bad did it crash? It worked last time. So, but obviously we're on thin ice with this whole thing. So let's see what happens. I'm just stubborn. Let's, uh, where do, where do we crash at? So the whole sequence. We've got our particle effect is still there. We've got this. You know, one thing I was looking at, and I don't know if this makes a difference, but I was looking at here. How do I get to, there's an option here. It says call an editor. And I, I left that checked on. Yeah, I guess we'll reopen it. So let's see. I think we're right back where we were. So let's see if it crashes again. So I'm going to right click. Did we lose our sequence? Double click on this. Oh, it's, it's still hooked up. Okay. So it really didn't like what I did. Okay, so we're going to do it again. I'm going to right click. Or no, just yeah, right click properties. Oh, it's bound. Okay, so anyway, let me hit play and see if it works. Yeah, it comes on. And it should go off after 10 seconds. And it does. So to test it, it is actually communicating. If we come over here to, oh, we'll go into our level blueprint here. I'll stop it. Let's just uh, change the delay time here. Let's just make it 20 seconds. Or I'll make it less. Okay, fine. I'll sit there for 10, 20 seconds. Okay, we'll compile and save. And what the heck? Let's print a string. And since we're at it, since it's so buggy. Hello. It works. And compile and save. Hit play. Five seconds it should stay on. Yeah, it seems to be working. So what can I say? You know, if you can figure out a way to get that, see that call function, the only caveat would be that it does seem potentially buggy for some reason, but it works. So I don't know. I mean, <laughs> If it works, it works, you know. But the last time I did it, it didn't crash. This time it crashed, but when we came back in, it it worked straight out. So you'll just have to use your judgment on this one. But let me know if you can get the call function. If you can find wherever it is, let me know. So anyway, take care, have a great day, and I hope you found this helpful.